drink beer, it's good for you. I'm empty handed and I'm feeling blue, and I'm gonna drink till the day that I die. Hello, and welcome to the video. This is a short follow up video to my beer research news video that was released just last month. In the first video released in May I gave viewers a heads up on trade information, but was unable to confirm more than that before the company went public themselves. So if you haven't seen the first part of this video, then I suggest you check that out first. I can now reveal that it was Fermentist Yeast that presented this information that I reported on in the first video. I am happy to say now that Fermentis have just started to roll out information on their website. The first of this is in relation to yeast rehydration. I have included a link to this information in the YouTube video's description. In this news article they confirmed that with their own dry yeast there is no need for rehydration. I have had much feedback from viewers on my first video, and many have not been rehydrating dry yeast in general themselves, with great results from a direct pitch for quite some time. As I stated in my first video, the rehydration of dry yeast in water is not something I have done for considerable years, and it is certainly not commonplace in breweries for that matter either. I suspect that other yeast companies will follow suit with this advice, otherwise it might be viewed that there is something unique about fermentous dry yeast compared to others. I also reported in my first video about the research conducted by Fermentis that it is advising against agitation of yeast during rehydration. Fermentis also stated during their presentation that aeration of wort when using their yeast is not a good practice for optimal yeast health. Lalamond yeast already clearly state do not stir on their yeast data sheets. In addition to this, they are also advising that there is no need to aerate wort when pitching their yeast upon first use. So it seems they have been doing their own in-house research also. I know that for some they would like to see more information to prove why these findings are correct. It is fair to say that there is older research in print to argue against these new findings. Maybe this research will be public so that people who are interested can weigh it up themselves. I have to say though, the easy way forward here is to simply try different methods yourselves and make your own decisions based on the results that you get back in your own brewing environment. It is also fair to say that lab conditions are probably not going to be the same as your home brewing conditions either. What I am doing here is simply reporting news. I cannot provide research data that is unavailable. Yeast companies will sometimes share certain findings, but may never go into any real detail. That is simply the commercial world that we live in. It is for you to test and draw your own conclusions on. And you never know, you might have some fun along the way doing so. I know I do. So this wraps up this short update. I do hope you found it interesting and useful. So if you did like this video, then please do like it on YouTube. This really helps me out and allows the videos to be seen by a wider audience on YouTube. I have always got a lot of new videos planned for the future, so if you are interested in seeing my new content, then please subscribe for future content. If you have any questions on anything that I have covered in this video, or any other video, then please do not hesitate to get in touch with me via YouTube or Facebook. I am a member of pretty much every Grainfather Facebook group and more. Happy Brewing!